This series of videos is a visual representation of best teaching practices within Shenandoah County Elementary Schools. This is a companion to our Division's Balanced Literacy Guide. While the guide is an excellent resource, these videos serve as the classroom application in action by our teachers and for our teachers. Literacy in Shenandoah County means that students are growing toward being independent and strategic in all aspects of literacy. So that includes reading, writing, thinking, and communicating. And we help them find their purpose for learning because we know that students need these skills to be thoughtful community members both now and in the future, which is why it's so important for literacy to live not only in language arts class, but in all content areas all day long. We have awesome teachers here who know that by empowering students with choices and texts they want to read, content they're curious about, and projects that feel meaningful, that those teachers are developing classroom communities where students have an active role in their own learning. Literacy in Shenandoah County means that students are active in supporting their growth as readers, writers, thinkers, and communicators. And teachers help develop that growth by developing student ownership in their learning, by integrating content so that students see literacy is everywhere, and by differentiating their instruction so that all students get what they need. In Shenandoah County, we use the balanced literacy model to integrate all aspects of literacy daily. This includes phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. We structure our time with students so that all needs are met. This time includes an opportunity for the whole class to be together for commonly needed skills, time when students work in small groups with the teacher for guided practice that is unique to those students' needs, and time when students can work independently so they can practice spreading their wings on their own. When teachers are looking to plan, they know their students better than anyone else. So our balanced literacy model is not scripted, it's not a specific program or a curriculum, but rather it's intentionally delivered instruction that can be complemented by the resources we have available. During whole group literacy instruction, the teacher pre-selects a skill or standard, then selects a book that uses this skill. He or she also pre-plans questions and talking points on post-its always sets a purpose for the read aloud. Students are not engaged in decoding, but they are participating by listening and responding. In this video, you will see two teachers engage in a whole group strategy called interactive read alouds. Pay close attention to how the teachers engage students in the read aloud with specifically planned questions. Hi, I'm Jennifer DeMarco and I teach first grade. I think that uh, interactive read-alouds are very important. Um, it's a chance for the children to see their teacher as a reader. And m my job for my students, I really want them to enjoy reading and ha develop that love for learning and love for reading. <gasps> Electricity came through wires that were strung over hills and through valleys. It powered street lamps and homes. This isn't nice. So look here, if we took a picture at nighttime here, friends, if we took a picture at nighttime here, it might not look like this. What do you think has changed? Um, by viewing the books that I'm choosing before the interactive read aloud, I know where I want that lesson to go. And yesterday, the purpose of that read aloud was to um, piggyback off of other books that we had been reading that were aligned with some of the standards of learning. And I heard a lot of talking, so I think we have some predictions on what we think this book is about. Oh, but what if I would have chosen this side? She watched birds making their nests, spiders spinning their webs, and squirrels chasing each other up and down trees. Who can tell me what she did outside? What did she do outside? Stop. Anna, sometimes when you're reading, you get like so into what's going to come next, and so you don't want to stop. 
Um, and so it's just kind of a thing for me to say, okay, remember you wanted to talk about this or you wanted them to do this to make a connection there. Okay. So to do those things, you'd have to learn how to be on YouTube. In this video, you will see a whole group strategy called Track Your Thinking. This strategy was used to help students monitor their thinking during a whole group lesson. It's also worthy to note that picking literature for a whole group instruction should be based on an on or above grade level text, and you'll see students are engaged in the text and share their ideas with their peers. I'm a fifth grade language arts teacher. Um, I use the Track My Thinking reading strategy. That is where you do, uh, it's like a read aloud. You give the students a piece of paper and you have them fold it into the fractional part of the number of questions that you've predetermined from the selection you're going to read. As you're reading, you ask them higher level um, thinking, critical thinking questions, and then they write their answers in complete sentences. After they've written their uh, sentences, then you let them have an opportunity to share their answers with their team. This gives them the opportunity to get their thoughts down on paper, synthesize the information, and then they can collaborate and communicate on their answers. I learned the Track My Thinking strategy from Dr. Paige Ferguson in a graduate course that I took at Texas Tech University. Today, that's where I read and we stop and I ask questions. You're going to write your answers in complete sentences and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to share with your team. Okay, so we're going to want to see good thoughts written down on your paper and good discussions. And we'll stop and talk. Right. The, uh, this is a strategy that I use with whole group. The text that I selected was Bud Not Buddy. The reason why I selected that text is because it is on a level that most fifth graders should be on at this time of the year. However, some of the students are not on that level. That is the reason why I chose to read it aloud and for it to be a more structured um, reading lesson. So, in your next blank box, how do you think Jerry feels about living with the three little girls? And why? The benefit of students writing their answers is that they're able to think through their answers and then they're prepared to share with their teammates. It holds them accountable for monitoring their own comprehension. Then as they're sharing their answers, everyone gets an opportunity to answer. You have 100% engagement and they're able to collaborate and check their understanding with their teammates. They're also reminded to go back and reread the text to prove their answers and um, have supporting evidence. Okay, you may share with your teammates. I say you might feel awkward because the only thing that's going to be about the world is like, what form wants to live with you? I said, Jerry, for me, knows and he feels like I'm going to be happy to be with my sister. I said, some boys are not like the best. Yeah, Jerry's unhappy because he has to be with three fresh little girls. Yeah, because he's the only boy around there. Yeah. What clues from the text make you think he's not? Because he said that he looked like um, that he just found out that they're going to drop him in a pot of boiling milk. What do you think that means? That he, it's, he feels his face doesn't look like he's happy at all. Okay. Jacob Stone does that. So like, no more about the book. No, so I'm like, just reading it. I feel like everyone would get it more. So like, like you'd be able to share your thoughts with everyone, so everyone can have a different opinion about it. Okay. Anyone want to share why you think he does not want to go live with the three little girls? This is the best strategy for my students because it gives them an opportunity to practice all the reading comprehension strategies at once and not in isolation. It's an opportunity to cycle back to the lessons that I have previously taught and they have learned and they're able to exercise what proficient readers really this from do. from the text shows us that he feels that way. What clues did the author give us? Well, it says that um, he looked like that he just found out that he's going to be put in a 
a pot of boiling milk. Okay. What do you think about that? I'd be pretty terrified. Okay. All right. Here we go. We're going to keep going. When students aren't tracking or monitoring their understanding, I am actively monitoring the classroom as I'm reading the text aloud. Every student is provided with a copy of the text. Um, I redirect when they're not tracking. I listen in whenever they're discussing their answers. I also check their papers to see what they're writing. If they are not checking or monitoring their understanding, then I re-ask the question. I remind them that good readers go back and reread. And then if that still doesn't work, then I rephrase the question and guide them to the correct answer. I collect the papers at the end of the lesson. I use it as a formal assessment to see if the children are really understanding and monitoring their um, reading, the comprehension of their reading. So this is different than guided reading. Um, this is something that I would use in whole group. Guided reading in uh, the fifth grade, there's more independent reading where they're responsible for their own reading and for preparing uh, their jobs, their lit circle jobs that they're going to bring to the group discussion. I also have my students do post-it notes as they're reading. They do post-it notes nearly every other page where they're identifying the main idea of that page and then when they come to uh, guided reading groups, we discuss their post-it notes and we have really good um, discussion over their books. What would you give? Um, I think track of thinking is a pretty good method. Mm -hmm. And I like the postcard things. You know, you get to do something new pretty much every single time. During small group literacy instruction, groups are determined by student data from various literacy assessments. Groups are also flexible based on the most current information. Routines, management, and planning are pivotal, and groups may include a teacher skill group, a word study group, independent reading, or writing. In this video, you will get a peek inside a well-balanced, literacy-centered kindergarten classroom. You will see groups are formed by using student data. Setting expectations for students who are working independently and in a small group is crucial to the success of the literacy block. One way to organize the literacy block is by using the Daily Five method, which you will see here. Integration of the five components of literacy into small group rotations guarantees a well-balanced literacy block. I'm Kate Erickson. I teach kindergarten at WWR. Um, I form my guided reading groups looking at data. I collect data usually for about the first nine weeks of kindergarten, um, looking not just at reading levels and background knowledge, but also looking at the cues that students are using, the mistakes that they're making, because there can be really big differences just in what they need as far as the, the cues that they're using. My students um, that are not working with myself or my paraprofessional are um, participating in independent work. It's, I use the daily five structure um, that consists of read to self, read to someone, work on writing, word work, and then listening to, to stories. Um, I've found that keeping it simple has been the way to go. I've not always used daily five. I've had years where I've used really um, fancy games and tubs and things like that, but getting down to what I really want students to do is I want them to spend time in books, I want them to work on writing and word work. It's all authentic. I think that there's always a misconception and I've been um, guilty of that as well that kindergartners can't sit and look at books independently for 20 minutes and stay engaged the entire time. And um, I was very wrong about that. Kindergartners can easily spend that time or longer um, fully engaged and the, the important piece is setting that expectation and working with them and building um, what the Daily Five calls stamina, um, practicing that. We, it takes us almost the first whole marking period to really build up to that um, and, and holding that expectation for my students and celebrating when we reach that point um, of 20 minutes of reading a day. And again, I think giving them high quality books that they're excited to look at and read um, really helps them to be successful. And I've found that 
spending the time in the beginning of the year really setting those expectations and helping students understand why and setting a purpose for that time has really paid off. Um, my students are always really engaged and um, making sure that they have high quality books for them to look at, not just leveled books, but they're always selecting their own lookbooks or even looking at old books that I've read to them has really made that time valuable. So now that I've gone over what students are doing when they're on their own, when they come to me, um, I use a Jan Richardson structure um, where students are, of course, doing guided reading, re looking at books that are on their reading level. Um, we always start off with sight word work, um, just to warm them up. Then I always do um, a, just a short and sweet book talk, just to introduce, go over any concepts that they might need to know, or front load vocabulary. And then the bulk of our guided reading time is them reading. Um, and to follow up, after we read, we spend a few minutes practicing a sight word that's from the text. Um, one of those using but confusing words that they're about to learn and then using um, that the rest of that time for either word study work, such as a word sort or using magnetic letters to make words, or on the second day that we do a short sentence to respond to the story. Now that you have viewed the literacy block as a whole, you are going to watch a video about small group reading instruction. Small group guided reading provides instructional level support for students based on the skill presented in the whole group lesson. As you watch this video, take a close look at how the book is introduced through the book walk and how the students are actively participating in whisper reading. Also note how the teacher keeps track of students' needs through the use of anecdotal notes. Alright, turn to the next two pages. Alright, Logan, what do you notice on this page? Um, he went back to sleep, and then what do you notice? Um, he woke up again. What does it, what do you think might have woken him up that time? Um, to me, taking a book walk is important, especially for kids that are a little bit behind where you would like for them to be um, because taking a look through the book um, and looking at the illustrations gives them a chance to anticipate what kinds of things they're going to see and what kinds of words they might come across um, especially if you know when they come to an unknown word if it's a book about lions they can at least have some clue as to what that word is going to be mm -hmm. about having the kids whisper read allows me to listen into each reader um, as I have time to listen to each kid read I can take anecdotal notes for myself because when you see a lot of groups in a day or in a week it's really hard to remember what each specific kid is doing what errors they're making and what kinds of instruction they're going to need specifically That's what you use them for today I was just taking an informal um, running record and I was marking um, correct words and I was making notes on what errors they made and and what words um, they said for the error so I can at least have some kind of indication of what it is they're doing or why they're making those specific errors. Yep. Is there something else you notice is different? What? Tell me. You sure? So this vowel is going to say it, but this vowel is going to say what? What sound? Um, so this one is gonna go t ick, but this one isn't gonna go t ick. This one's gonna go t. This one's gonna go ick. So look at it. It's gonna go t. So this is gonna say. Um, she definitely ignores chunks of words sometimes. She needs. She needs more um, instruction with the visual piece of breaking apart words and looking at the whole word and not just chunks. A lot of times she'll make errors just by looking at the beginning of a word or the ending. Not She doesn't look all the way through the word. So her and I spend time together breaking down words in chunks and sometimes decoding and blending it back together. Um, but we need a lot more work in that visual piece of her reading. In this video, you will see Ms. Holston and her students engaging in many small group tasks. 
Specifically, Ms. Holston is working with two small groups on word study. I'm Noelle Holston from Sandy Hook Elementary School, teach fourth grade, and I want to talk a little bit about my literacy block. So we incorporate word study, guided reading, um, writing workshop, as well as specific reading comprehension um, skills and strategies. The driving piece in all of those is um, how you group kids, and that would be by assessing them and grouping them in um, either similar ways or sometimes heterogeneous, but normally with literacy, we keep them uh, pretty similar. And then those groups are flexible, so we assess uh, several times throughout the year and even throughout a unit, and groups change based on how kids uh, perform. Um, oh, yeah. Four. Oh, oh, four. Oh, 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 um, there, it's really important, I think, to set up uh, guidelines that so many pieces in a small literacy block that it's really important to have some routines and groups know what that they should be doing um, while you're working back with a small group. And um, hopefully you'd be able to have everybody working at the same time. Really? Um, so independent reading is um, something that I struggled with for a long time to make sure that the books were appropriate for the kids, their reading level, and that they were getting the most out of that time. So um, we have worked really hard on them being able to kind of self-assess what is a just right book for them if they can read a page and ask themselves do, do I know what just happened, then that book is okay. Um, that is something you have to do from the get-go at the beginning of the year. Otherwise, you're going to have kids with texts that are just not appropriate for them at all. Um, the one way that I'm able to kind of make sure that pe kids are reading, if they do have a little log, we call it a challenge, a 40 book challenge, because that is motivating um, to get them to read. And they write down when they start a book, when they end a book, they're able to rate it. And I pick those up periodically and see how they're reading, what, what they're reading. And then sometimes I ask them to just respond. So we have a list of fiction, list of nonfiction questions. They pull one of the questions out and respond. And you can tell pretty easily if um, they're understanding what they're reading or not. What about C? Uh, 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 uh. That. So it is a lot of planning and if you have not taught word study it's a lot of really understanding what the patterns are because it is so specific each sort and they really do need to um, kind of understand and internalize the patterns for it to work. As far as managing the groups it's just in the planning and making sure that you know what each group needs to know that week so that when you get them at their table, you have what you need ready. I even make little notes for myself in my plans, like have the orange group start by sorting however they think they need to go, and then talk about sounds or patterns that they see. So just making sure that you have a plan for everybody so that when you have more than one group working at one time, it's easy to kind of go back and forth because you know what everybody should be doing. It does. It does. One of them is short, but is one of them long? Yeah. Which one? Long. Oh, oh. Somewhere could be probably. Yeah. No, that's long. Okay, so that's actually long. So you have to write it. That's the W A R N. So it's long. Are you ready to write? I'm with the gel. Which one are you talking about? We're talking yeah. about what I was saying is video you will see Mrs. I facilitating a small group differentiated guided reading lesson. 
Notice that Mrs. I's time spent with the small group of her transitional readers is focused on the comprehension rather than the reading of a book. She takes a back seat and acts as a facilitator, allowing her students to lead the discussion. Also take notice of what the other students are doing during this time and the importance of providing a silent reading time with student choice. Hi, I'm Shelly I. I teach third grade at W.W. W. Robinson. When I begin at the beginning of the year setting up my rotations, I first allow for a few weeks to um, gather data from beginning of the year assessments from Gansky, running records, and other data I receive from second grade teachers. Once I have all that information, I sit down and kind of form groups based on the students' strengths and weaknesses. That gets me started. Um, when I'm setting up my groups, I think about the literacy diet and what my students need. In third grade, most of my students are transitional readers, so a lot of focus is on independent reading and comprehension. Um, I also think about word study, how much time they need for word study and also for writing. Focus on guided reading and I break it up into about 15 to 20 minutes per group. I don't like to set times because it can vary. Some groups I might spend a half hour with. Some groups I might only spend 15 minutes with where they higher groups. That time with those students is more of a discussion and comprehension questions. My on-level groups or below-level groups, they're actually going to spend their time with me reading more so um, and, and some discussion. When I think about my time with my students in small group, I still divide my lessons up into before, during, and after activities and think about what my role is, what their role is during those times. And the focus really is on reading. When I think about that hour, I want most of that hour to be spent with them actually reading and comprehending text. No way, his character. I don't want to spoil it because I want to Okay, well, let's choose somebody else. I don't see Mary. I think that something's gonna happen to Mike that makes make Charlie's last one standing. When I think about my whole group of language arts mini lessons, to me that is what all third graders need. That's the core instruction. Versus your guided reading time, you're going to differentiate that instruction based on where your students are. You might have to choose books that are, um, that you will have to choose books that are appropriate for your lower level students versus your higher students. You're going to, might even possibly take that mini lesson and extend it and make that lesson even harder or more advanced for those students. And he's going to get into the TV and his mom's going to try to grab him, but then like... <gasps> what if she gets sucked up? Yeah, that's what oh. I was going to say. Oh, what if that happens? I also like to in incorporate silent reading time for my students every day. This is so important for them to have that opportunity to build their fluency, build their comprehension. And I also like the students to have a choice in this um, time because as adults, we don't have someone else telling us the books that that we read, so it's important for them to have a choice in the books that they choose for their bin. I do require that they have um, a variety of books, so uh, two or three fiction, two or three nonfiction, variety of texts. They can also include magazines, um, just so that I know that they have an opportunity to read a variety of literature that they can be well read. What is your favorite thing about your teacher? She, um, she's really nice. Um, in what ways does she show you that she's nice? She lets us get in groups and talk and we, um, like, she lets us, like, um, uh, we get to pick, um, out our books and she has a student library where we can pick out our own books. What kind of books do you choose? I choose, um, like, I... This week I choose a, a map book, um, an atlas book, 
and um, I oh, choose I choose like one or two graphic novels every time because we and we have uh, we're allowed to get two nonfiction, two fiction, and one choice. Uh -huh. When you first get started, I think it can be overwhelming when you think, oh my goodness, I have to plan a lesson for four different reading groups. How will I have time for that? So one thing that I've found helpful is to look for resources that are available in um, the reading lab or online. Oftentimes I've found websites that provide guided reading lessons um, for popular book series that we offer here in the book room and that's been helpful to me and also using the Journeys program. You can't use everything but you can also pick and choose what you think would be appropriate for your students. That way you have something to go by and also talking to your mentors and your, your team. They can be such a great help when you're um, planning all of those lessons if you collaborate your ideas together so you don't feel so overwhelmed in the beginning.